The longer I stay invested in the markets, the crazier things get and the more I learn about the stock market because I just recently learned that the Super Bowl is able to somewhat reliably predict the stock market, which is crazy because stocks are supposed to move up and down based on profitability and revenue growth and forward guidance and how much money Papa Powell prints, but definitely not what happens at the Super Bowl. So in today's video, I wanna explain exactly how this works and I'll show you all the data behind why people say the Super Bowl can predict the stock market. So to start, this whole concept was discovered by Leonard Copet in 1978 and it's called the Super Bowl Indicator. Now, full disclosure, I don't know much about football, but I do know you're supposed to get the ball from one side of the field to the other, which is when you score a touchdown worth six points, at which point you'll have two options. You can either kick the ball for a field goal, which is an additional point, or you can run it, which is an additional two. Now, I'm sure you knew all that by now, but in Soviet Russia, we don't have football. We have football. Whenever a team won the Super Bowl that came from the NFC, the stock market went up for the entire year. But if the winning team came from the AFC, the stock market went down. So I wanna to get to the bottom of this idea and see if this is actually true or not. And hopefully along the way, we'll learn a lot about football and a lot more about the stock market. I'm excited, let's get right into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well, come for the finance and stay for the Super Bowl. So first I wanna say that this video is supposed to be all in good fun. It's supposed to be a lighthearted video and you should never base your investing decisions around football, Super Bowl, or YouTube videos because they have nothing to do with how the stock market works. But now that the Super Bowl is coming up this Sunday, I thought it'd be really fun to show some interesting statistics from LPL research. Check this out. The first 27 Super Bowls that were ever held were insanely accurate in predicting the stock market. It was like you had a crystal ball and you could see into the future. Between 1967 to 1994, whenever a team from the AFC won the Super Bowl, the stock market went down by an average of 2.1%. But whenever a team from the NFC won the Super Bowl, the stock market went up by an average of 12.3%. That's a huge difference. And if those numbers look like that today, then I would bet my entire house on it. My house in the metaverse, that is. But coming this Sunday, we're hosting Super Bowl 56. And we have a lot more data to work with. And here's what that data looks like now. Between 1967 and 2021, whenever a team from the National Football Conference, that's the NFC, has won the Super Bowl, the stock market, which is this stock right here, the S&P 500, has averaged a 10.8% return. And whenever they won, the stock market was up almost 80% of the time. This means that coming this Sunday, if you're an investor in the stock market, you probably want the LA Rams to win. But whenever the other side has won, a team from the AFC, the stock market was up an average of only 7.1% in comparison, and the stock market was up only 65%. 0.4% of the time. So what does it all mean? It means it's time to thank today's sponsor. As much as I love investing in the stock market and in crypto, I think the most important thing anyone can ever invest in is their health, which is why I wanna introduce you to AG1 by Athletic Greens. It's my one-stop shop for everything related to my immunity, my energy, my tummy health and digestion, and of course, mental clarity. Because I've got no life, and sometimes I forget to drink 30 different vitamins. But with one scoop or travel packet combined with eight ounces of water, it gives me everything I need, 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens in one convenient daily serving. I've been drinking AG1 for almost a month now and I feel a noticeable difference. I feel more energetic, I feel like my immune system has improved, and I feel like my hair is just shinier and nicer. Maybe I'm just taking more showers. But the best part is that it tastes great, it's super simple, and it's so convenient, which means it's a habit that I can actually stick with. It's also gluten-free, it contains no eggs, no added sugar, it's nut-free and dairy-free, and it's made in New Zealand, and it's NSF certified certified for sport, which is the gold standard for professional athletes. Now, I'm not a professional athlete, but I aspire to be one when I grow up. And if you're watching this video right now and you click the link in the description below, you'll get a year's supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. Thank you, Athletic Greens, for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's get back to it. In the present time, here's what the Super Bowl tells us about the stock market. In the last 10 of 11 years, whenever a team from the AFC won the Super Bowl, the stock market was up. And this is 
is because the stock market has been on a bull run in the last 10 plus years, which means you can point to virtually anything and say, see, the stock market is up because this random thing, even though they might not have anything to do with each other. Over time, the data will look like 50-50. We just need more time. And this is true if we look at the more recent data between 1995 and 2021, because whenever an AFC team won the Super Bowl, the stock market returned an average of 12.7%. But whenever a team from the NFC won the Super Bowl, the stock market averaged about 17.2%. It's not quite 50-50 yet, but over time, the gap will close. Not to mention the fact that in 2008, the New York Giants won the Super Bowl. That's a team from the NFC, which meant that the stock market should have gone up. Instead, we got the 2008 financial crisis. So if this was a Mythbusters episode, then this myth is busted. But this got me thinking, are there any other special myths that investors use to try to gain the upper hand and make more money with? And it turns out there's a couple other really cool and interesting ones, one of which actually does make more money. And I wanna share that with you right now. The next stock market myth is called the January effect. And it says that the stock market typically does really well at the start of the year, especially for small cap stocks. That is companies with a $2 billion market cap or less. And this is because investors typically like to sell their stocks in December to realize their capital gains, and then they like to sell their losing stocks to offset those capital gains via the tax loss harvesting strategy to reduce their taxable income. And at the start of the year, people like to set up their New Year's resolutions, and with all the cash they got from selling their stocks in December, they like to reinvest back into the stock market. And because small cap stocks are disproportionately owned by small retail investors, that's what gives them that momentum because people buy back in. And for many years, investors have tried to use this strategy to make a little bit of extra money. So now let's take a look at some data to see if it makes sense. Between the years 1984 to 2000, the best month in the stock market was actually December, up 2.6% on average. But the second best month in the stock market was January, up 2.4% on average. So I guess this theory is kind of true. January really is a good month. But hold on, if you were to try to use this January effect strategy by putting all of your money in on January 1st, holding everything until January 31st, and that's when you sold, doing this between 2000 and 2017, the data shows that you would have lost 0.84% per year. But there's another twist to January. There's something called the January barometer, and here's how it works. If the month of January ends lower than where it started in the red, then the rest of the year, the stock market should also end in red and vice versa. If January ends in the green higher than where it started, then the rest of the year should also be in the green. Based on this theory, our January for 2022 was down 6%, which means that the stock market should be ending in red as well. Now, is this theory actually true? The answer is yes, but no, because the January barometer effect has been much more reliable in predicting a bull market than it has a bear market. In 2017, for example, in January, the stock market was up only 2%, but the stock market ended the year up 19%. And then in 2019, January was up 8%, but the year ended up 28%. January has been a reliable predictor of the stock market 75% of the time since 1945. That's amazing. But we also have to remember that since 1945, there have only been 17 years of the last 76 when the stock market went down. So it might not be so much that it's January as much as it is the United States economy that just loves to print tendies. But here's why January has not been so reliable in predicting a bear market. Going back as far as 1950, whenever January ended the month in red, the stock market still went up 14 out of 28 times. That's what happened in 2020. That's what happened in 2021. So if anything, the January barometer effect is more reliable at predicting the upside and it's 50-50 on the downside. So back to Mythbusters, if this was a myth, I would say that this is inconclusive. And the reason it's inconclusive is because it's highly based on psychology. And psychology in the markets is an extremely powerful thing because the more people believe it, the more real it becomes. 
That's how technical analysis works, and it's also how hypnosis works. If you believe it works, then it works. The next stock market myth, though, is gonna blow your mind because this is what can sometimes make some serious money. It's called the sell in May and go away or the best six month strategy. Now, this was first published by Yale Hirsch in 1986 in his Stock Traders Almanac. Seriously, that's the name of it, and it's gonna blow your mind. This study back tests the data to the year 2000, and the strategy goes like this. You have to buy on November 1st, and then sell on May 1st. Then buy back in on November 1st, sell everything on May 1st. You have to rinse and repeat. So remember, the green arrow represents buying in, and the red arrow represents selling out. Check this out. So you buy in the year 2000, low, you sell high. Buy low, 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 sell high. You can see every green arrow is lower than the red. Every single time. And now let's put the strategy into context because let's say that you had $100,000 and you were doing this best six month strategy for 42 years in a row. Since 1980, you were doing this perfectly. Today, that $100,000 would be worth $5.7 million. That's an annualized rate of return of about 10.1%, which is mind-blowingly amazing. And the longest period of time where your portfolio wasn't making money was only 45 months, which is not that bad. Now let's compare it to the buy and hold strategy. If you had that same $100,000 invested since 1980 and you did nothing but just hold it through to the end. Today, that same $100,000 would be worth $12.4 million. So you'd still end up with more money just holding all your shares. But the trade-off was that the longest period of time your portfolio was not making money was 73 and a half months. And psychologically, it's a lot harder to continue investing knowing that you haven't made money in six years. But if you held strong, you would have ended up with more. But that's the US stock market. Now let's compare it with the international market. If you invested your money in this stock, the MSCI total return index with $100,000 over the last 42 years, a buy and hold strategy would have left you with $3.8 million. Now that's not bad, but using the best six month strategy would have made you much more money because today that $100,000 would be worth $7 million. And that is insane. Why and how does this sorcery work? It works because of seasonal patterns and our shared psychological belief that it's true. Because even if something is fundamentally not true, as long as we both believe it to be true, then it becomes true. That's how money works, that's how crypto works, that's especially how NFTs work, and that's how the stock market works. Because if we all believe that we need to take a vacation in May, that's what we're gonna do. And how do we pay for that vacation? We sell some stocks. And that's how the stock market moves in seasonal patterns. And this goes back to ye old London, when all the rich people would go to something called St. Ledger's Stakes, which was a horse racing event for rich people to get away from the hot summer months. So buy in May and go away, I would say that that myth is confirmed, at least for international markets and half and half for US markets. So there's one more myth I wanna share with you that I think is also pretty cool. The Santa Claus Rally. Now this one says that the last five trading days of December and the first two trading days of January have been a really good week for the stock market. This is because of the holiday spirit, holiday bonuses, holiday shopping, people are spending money, so it kind of makes sense. It was also created by Yale Hirsch. It was the same guy that created the best six month strategy. And the famous saying goes like this, if Santa fails to call, then bears may come to broad and wall. And in his 2016 Stock Traders Almanac, he observed that 34 of the last 45 holidays have yielded a positive stock market with an average rate of return of about 1.4%. Now, looking at this from a broader time horizon, over the last 92 years, the stock market averaged 77% of the time in the green with an average rate of return of about 2.6%. So I guess this myth is kind of confirmed. It's true that December really is typically a good month, at least the end of it. And it's not something that I would base my whole investment decision around. So I guess it's not totally confirmed. So I wouldn't bet the entire house on it, unless your houses are in the metaverse. 
because of uh, unlimited power. As always, have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Go grab up to $250 worth of free Bitcoin with this block by link right here. Get all your free stocks, links down below, and then go track them automatically with this spreadsheet link down below on my Patreon. Love you, thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. Enjoy the Super Bowl, stay safe. I'll see you soon, bye-bye.